any time by looking at a wristwatch and looking down at the earth, we knew what was underneath the clouds and it aided us in some ways in picking out what, uh, what we should be seeing. There are some secrets too powerful to contain, too fascinating to ignore. For decades, the name Area 51 has whispered of hidden technology, encounters with the unexplained, a glimpse into a world most only dare imagine. Legends and rumors swirl endlessly, a tantalizing mix of science fiction and chilling possibility. These smuggled photos offer more than just a peek behind the curtain. They're a direct challenge to what we think we know. Are we alone in the universe? What wonders or even dangers could be concealed from our view? Prepare to explore the unknown because what you're about to see might forever change your understanding of reality are the missing ones. So there have been many conspiracy theories and real stories where the CIA has assassinated people, they've planned to kill people, they've made people go missing if they know too much. And I know the first thing that comes to mind when you think about these missing people is that they were obviously killed. I mean if they're gonna go to the effort of making someone vanish off the face of the earth then surely they'd just kill them. But what if they didn't? What if they transported them to a secret underground base at Area 51? We already know there are quite a few underground facilities at Area 51, so why can't a prisoner holding base be one of them? If you're locked up or trapped in Area 51, you're as good as dead according to the CIA anyway, since no one will ever know you're there or be able to find you or save you. It's the perfect non-violent solution where everyone wins, except of course the people locked up in Area 51. Sorry about that. Coming in at number nine, we have alien scientists. So I feel like with the amount of government cover-ups over different plane and military craft crashes and their remains, I definitely believe Area 51 houses aliens and not just the dead remains of all the ones for observation. I'm talking proper communicative aliens that are helping human scientists. This may be far-fetched, but considering people think a one world government operates at Area 51, that government would need a lot of alien tech for whatever their future plans of world domination are. So with that in mind, I think from these alien spacecraft crashes in the past, living aliens were saved from them and now they're here working for the US government either voluntarily or involuntarily. And they probably have Einstein level knowledge and then some, so I hope that the first people we saved when we went in there, I don't know, I haven't checked yet, but you probably would have by the time this goes up, so let me know. At number 8 we have the getaway sources. To say the whole world is going to right now, say there's been like a zombie apocalypse or something more realistic like climate change, tipping point or a food shortage or a disease epidemic or something, or a 2012 scenario where like the earth is literally breaking apart. People need to run, they need to survive and in this scenario forget us mere citizens, they're not worried about us. The people that they'd want saved are the leaders, the president, the very rich and the people with power. And like in the movie 2012, this top 1% had a secret base in China where they would be safe from everything. Similarly, I think the same sort of thing is located in Area 51 in the form of getaway flying saucers. Think about it. The only way to save yourself from this planet, from the horrors of it, is just to simply leave the planet. And what better way to do that than on highly advanced spacecraft with aliens or extraterrestrials you've been making this plan and deal with for the past century. It's like the perfect escape. Us peasants just get to die on Earth and Trump's out here making planet Plut great again. The filling on number 7 slot is the landing strip, and we can thank Google Earth images for this one. Back in 2016, it revealed a strange mile-long landing strip located in Area 6, which is about 12 miles northeast of Area 51. There's also a cluster of hangars at the end of the runway, which is quite odd, and if you don't know what a hangar is, it's basically a building that houses aircrafts. No one knows what's being tested there and why the hell they have a mile-long runway. It looks sus, and based on my previous video about what the government is hiding in Area 51, this is the fully functional alien airport I was talking about. Check that video out if you haven't already. Now at number 6 is Paradise Ranch. So of course there are a number of employees that work at Area 51 and regardless of how high up you were or how much you enjoyed your job, living in the middle of nowhere in the desert is boring. During its heyday when it was a testing site for the U-2 aircraft, an engineer called Kelly Johnson tried to rebrand the area to try and convince more government workers to move there with their families so he came up with Paradise Ranch. Far from Paradise, 
it was actually just an area filled with rows of trailers for families to live in. That is literally it. No amenities even, I mean at least build a grocery store or a pool. I don't know how they named it Paradise Ranch, that's the biggest fake news if you ask me. And either way, clearly the ghost town trailer area remained a ghost town trailer area. Even the picture of it just gives me the creeps. Coming in at number 5 is the picture. There are barely any aerial pictures of Area 51 at all and in 1974 astronauts on Skylab 4 were taking pictures of Earth for a larger project and they happened to take a picture of Area 51. Honestly you can't even see anything in the picture but the lake and terrain but soon after a memo went around to them saying they had specific instructions to not do this and that this was the only location which had such an instruction. They want to keep this so under wraps, the CIA considers Area 51 to be the most sensitive spot on Earth. So apparently now we can't even take pictures of it from space. I mean, can the CIA control what we do in space? I, I, I don't think so. At number 4 is The Fire. Most of you know Tom DeLonge as the lead singer of Blink-182, but what you may not know is that he's now an alien hunter. A few years ago he went camping near Area 51 and things got real. During one night he woke up at around 3am and his body felt weird. It felt like static electricity was coursing through his body and when he finally opened his eyes, he realised at least his fire was still going, but there also seemed to be noises coming from outside his tent. And it wasn't just one sound, it sounded like it was coming from 20 people. Immediately he was thinking right I'm about to get abducted, here they are, they're not gonna hurt me, they're just talking sh He tried to listen in on what they were saying but he coincidentally passed out and woke up to find he had no idea what had happened in the last 3 hours. And having done a ton of research on the topic, Tom knew this chatter was involved in every alien contact or abduction story so I mean he was this close. Filling our number 3 slot is the battle and hold on because it's definitely not the battle you're thinking of. The Sheehan family has owned Groom Mine which is a segment of Area 51 for more than 125 years. The US Air Force has been trying to buy the land off them for a very long time, offering them 5.2 million dollars for more than 400 acres of land. They're adamant on kicking them out because even though they've been escorting the family into the space for decades, they can no longer ensure their safety. The base runs 24 7 and sometimes they even cancel missions when the family comes out, which stop being financially viable. On the other side, the family claimed it's not the tests that pose a threat, it's the military themselves. Bullets were even fired around their property in the 40s in an attempt to get them to leave. Family members have even been held at gunpoint on their own property which the air force denies and the family even tried to sue them but ran out of money. They no longer own the land that generations had worked so hard to obtain and I think that puts into perspective that when area 51 is concerned anything goes. Now at number 2 is the humming. Back in 1965, Charlie Arendelle was working as a security guard at a mine near Area 51 and on two consecutive nights he was told to shoot anything he saw on sight. Him and a few other guards were driven to another airstrip and told to guard it. The first night they all heard a weird almost muted humming sound for half an hour and when the sound stopped their shifts ended as well. But as they were leaving they saw a huge circular camouflaged tent on the runway surrounded by armed troops with their backs to it. The next night they heard the sound again but this time the tent was nowhere to be found. Now I can't confirm what Charlie saw because I wasn't there but I feel like he was bused to the Mylong airstrip also known as the functioning alien airport and was told to protect the vessel as well as potentially kill anyone or anything that comes off of it. And finally at number 1 is the BBC invasion. Breaking into area 51 can end up in many ways. Number 1 the camo dudes can just shoot you, number 2 you can get fined for a thousand dollars and go to jail for 6 months or 3 they sacrifice you to the aliens because you've seen too much. Never thought jail would sound good until now. Either way this team of journalists from BBC learned this the hard way when in 2012 they broke into the site looking for a juicy story. Anything for the team my friends. After filming for around 30 minutes one of the crewmen knocked on a door and 8 camo dudes which is their official name by the way I'm actually not bullshit came out with assault rifles and forced the crew to the ground. They all had to lie face down with guns to their backs for 3 hours until the sheriff came. All their phones, film equipment, microphones, everything were taken away from them and that's not even the worst part. Amongst the many threats the crew received, one was exceptionally scary. Son, we could make you disappear and your body will never be found. And I honestly don't doubt they could do that for a second. Starting our list off at number 10, Dark History. This secret base in the Nevada desert 
acts as the US military hub for spatial engineering and you know possibly hopefully some reverse engineering for some alien crafts. The area is named after the geological grid of the desert. The area gained notoriety of course in the early 90s with numerous claims that workers had worked on alien aircraft and even heard of harboring alien creatures underground. The entire premises is fenced off with signs saying no photography allowed and also use of deadly force is authorized. So whatever they're hiding here it's mostly military hopefully with a little splash of ET. The base has been a testing facility for the Air Force and remains one of the most highly secured and secretive bases in America. Number 9. Tickaboo Peak. Say you're watching this video and you want something, right? What's the closest you can legally get to Area 51, right? What's the only way you can possibly see footage of a little alien ship coming and or going? Well, you gotta go to Tickaboo Peak, that's how. Located right in the middle of the Nevada desert, Area 51, of course, is hard to see. This peak could help that problem. Bob Lazar, back in 1989, he spoke out to news outlets explaining how he used to work in Area 51, specifically on UFOs using anti-gravity technology. With this peak being just 26 miles away from the top secret base, you might just see a test flight or two from the bushes, just like Bob did, right? Number eight, they can't stop all of us. Back in the 1950s, the public wanted answers as well. It was June 17th, 1959. The Reno Evening Gazette published a story with the headline reading, more flying objects seen in Clark Sky. More? what I miss? More flying objects? Then the paper even went on to describe how Sergeant Wayne Anderson, a local sheriff, was one of many locals that spotted what the paper described as an object bright green in color and descending towards the earth at a speed too great to be an airplane. Yeah, like a meteor, I guess. I don't know, that's terrifying. What could they possibly be talking about? Fulfilling our number seven slot are the bodies. So we've heard of the BBC crew that got into the base and were basically pointed at with guns and forced to stay on the floor for hours. There are signs all around and leading up to the base saying you'll get shot if you try and trespass onto the base, but of course in kinder words because they can't just outright say we'll shoot you. I suspect there have been many people that have managed to make it into the base and some were definitely shot and that wasn't publicized because it makes the government look bad. Some probably did make it somehow but were hiding on the ground under some major camouflage and I suspect they were either found out and then killed, stayed hiding there because hiding there was still better than trying to leave, getting spotted and then getting shot. All in all, I suspect there are quite a few skeletons remains to be found in area 51. I feel like the families of those people are still like where did they go? They went to get groceries and they never returned. Now at number six are alien offspring. I feel like any alien still at Area 51 right now is either dead and there for observation or working there involuntarily or locked up. Honestly, let's be real, none of them actually want to be there when they could be at home with their families on planet Glip. Like, let's be real. So with that being said, I'm sure there have been many escape plans executed by them, maybe some even self-sacrifice, not wanting to tell the evil humans their secrets or because they simply couldn't take being on Earth anymore. So to combat that and ensure the longevity of the alien link, I really believe the heads in charge definitely got them to reproduce and cloned those eggs or fetuses so they'd have a whole armory of aliens if the existing one successfully left or whatever the hell escaped, died, blew up, self-detonated, I don't really know. Coming in at number five are star-crossed lovers. I feel like this has to happen without fail when two people or entities from totally different upbringings and backgrounds meet and hate each other at first and then they fall in love. In this case, I'm talking about an alien and one of the Area 51 workers. So as I previously mentioned, there are most likely aliens living at Area 51 who can communicate with us, so I feel like one of the workers, if not more, who interact with them daily have probably fallen in love with one. You know how it goes, it would have started off like, what the hell are you, and vice versa. Then it would have been like, okay, let me just quickly do my job and then leave. Then it would have moved on to things like telling each other bits and pieces about their own lives. Then in a moment of laughter, one of them realizes, wait, I'm head over heels in love with them. And then comes the confession of love, then the no, we're too different, it'll never work, the CIA won't let you be with me, and my parents on planet yip Ju will never allow this. And then they get over it and have a secret romance until one of them has to kill the other, Hunger Games style. And if you weren't just sucked into that love story so hard, then you're definitely lying. At number four are dinosaurs. Hear me out, I know you're gonna think I'm ridiculous, but I'm not. 
maybe a little bit. So there is no proof that says aliens came after us. If anything, we've seen signs in cave drawings from God knows what BC indicating that alien sightings have been occurring for a long, long time. So who's to say they weren't around during the Cretaceous period and prior? What if they were flying in and out of Earth during the period dinosaurs roamed the Earth? It's not like dinosaurs could record that aliens were visiting, and even if they did, somehow they were wiped out anyway, so there's that. But what if aliens found them interesting? What if they're like, ooh, what is that? What if they stole and preserved some eggs here and there like Jurassic Park? If they were smart, honestly, if it was me, I would have gotten one of each gender for each species of dinosaur, and if they did, who's to say they weren't forced to share that at Area 51 after being captured from a crash? What if they wanted to share the knowledge? Pretty sure dinosaurs have a better chance of surviving on Earth where there's oxygen than on planet Zeus where there's none. It could be the alien human dino alliance, I had her for short. Phil and Adam 3 slot are clones. Okay, so there's a huge debate about whether cloning is ethical or not. I mean, honestly, yes, it is weird. It's creepy to have someone or something that looks exactly the same as something else, yet their personalities are completely different. It's strange, I get it. We've successfully cloned animals throughout history, but humans is something we've never done. Most countries in the world actually ban cloning anyway, so there's that, but there's a bunch of states in the US that don't specifically ban cloning, but ban reproductive cloning. So if human technology can achieve it, maybe alien technology can and has. What if there are clones just walking around Area 51 and we have no idea about it? What if they've cloned prime ministers and other world leaders to make it easier to make appearances when really the real Theresa May is on planet Clintob? What if? What if they're in there cloning humans and aliens? There are just so many what ifs. Am I a clone? Who knows? Now at number two are the cures. So again, this one is problematic to talk about, but somebody's gotta do it. That someone's gonna be me. <laughs> Many people believe that the government injects diseases into the public, which creates an epidemic. Many thought that of the Ebola outbreak in Africa a few years ago as well. Some think the government is behind it to control population numbers, whereas others think they do it to distract from a bigger story going on underneath. Whichever story you wanna believe, if the government created the disease, they also created the cure to it, and I believe those cures are stored in Area 51. And I even believe they have the cure to other things like AIDS and cancer in there as well. You know how they say the pharmaceutical industry makes the most money because they keep you sick? If you weren't sick, they wouldn't be making money, so they don't even want a cure to be found. But what if it's already been found? They're just not releasing it so the economy can gain more money for all these people that do have these illnesses. Sadistic, and it's all there in Area 51. I hope when you guys read it, you found it. And finally, at number one is Osama bin Laden. Laden. Very controversial, I know, and of course, I don't mean any disrespect by putting him on the list, but again, I'm not gonna pussyfoot around any topic on this channel. So the news broke in May of 2011 that Bin Laden had been found in a compound and killed by a CIA-led operation. That's all we know, that's all we got told. And I've been hearing about this conspiracy for years now that he actually wasn't killed. Like, did we ever see his dead body? No, we didn't. They said they identified his body many ways, by his height, while many people out there are 6'4". Apparently one of his wives was shouting his name during the raid, and again that could have just been a body double and someone paying an impoverished woman to just shout a name. It's not that hard. His burial took place at sea and it wasn't documented. According to a US official, there are pictures of his body and the burial, but where they at though? So no one other than the people involved saw his apparent assassination and burial, so people believe that, well one, they didn't actually kill him, two, they killed a lookalike cause that could be possible, it's happened in the past, or three, Three, he's being hidden in Area 51 till his death. So, I mean, there's some food for thought. At number 10, the CIA did not acknowledge it was a real place until 2013. That's right, the government's worst kept secret was only confirmed to be real following the declassification of a document which was released as part of a freedom of information request. Now, the CIA doesn't mention aliens. Instead, they say that Area 51 was formerly the base for testing US government U-2 spy planes and the ox cart, and it was used in the 40s as a World War II training camp. Funnily enough, this document doesn't mention aliens or spacecrafts or anything of the kind. Maybe the truth of Area 51's real purpose is still being concealed and this is all just a decoy. Let me know what you think in the comments below. In at number 9, lobster was regularly flown in to Area 51 from Maine. That's right, Maine, on the other side of the country. Talk about extravagant, jets were flown from Nevada all of the way to Maine and back again, only yielding lobster. 
As jets were tested out of Area 51, they thought that they may as well pick up some goodies for the team. Pilots would head out, grab lobster for everyone, and fly back in time for dinner. Cute of them. Getting cheeky at number 8, there is a sci fi themed brothel very near to the location of Area 51. Talk about the XXX Files, an intergalactic themed brothel is very near to Area 51 where people can indulge in their sci fi wildest dreams. Opening up just south of the infamous Area 51, we have the Area 51 Alien Cat House, run by Dennis Hoff, a well known brothel entrepreneur. Now, men can pay to hook up with their favourite sci fi characters and freaky aliens whilst Knowing they're just a stone's throw away from the real deal. Hoff said, Unless they're married, I don't want anyone in Nevada having sex until I get a cut of the money. That's just very creepy. Swishing in. Number seven, the Gorman dogfight. Ah, this one is a classic. A lot of people believe this encounter. This encounter lasted a whopping 27 minutes in the air. A dogfight happened between a veteran World War II fighter pilot named George F. Gorman and a UFO. It was him versus a white orb, and they were both at an extremely high altitude above Fargo, North Dakota. Gorman told a local newspaper following the 1948 event, the experienced pilot said, and I quote, if anyone else had reported such a thing, I would have thought they were crazy. Captain Ruppelt operated Project Blue Book, a series of studies conducted by the US Air Force between 1947 and 1969, and there's reports of the same dogfight from the ground as well. So yes, there are multiple eyewitnesses for this one. Number six, Project Aquatone. So we think about aircraft evolution over the last, say, 100 years. Well, back in 1955, Area 51 was selected by the CIA as a testing site for the Lockheed U-2. And if you've seen Top Gun Maverick lately, good on you, great film, 10 out of 10. But if you've seen it, this will tickle your fancy. The Lockheed U-2 was this high altitude aircraft. It was the top of the line technology and tests were originally conducted over the code name Project Aquatone. Now on June 25th, 2013, the CIA approved the release of declassified documents that details for the first time officially the history of the U-2 and Oxcard programs in response to a Freedom of Information Act request, just like we're seeing right now with these, you know, UFO videos online. The release of those documents marked the first time that the US government actually acknowledged the existence of Area 51. And since then, we've been waiting around for another big announcement or something. Number five. Virginia sighting. We have to look at some sightings to know what goes on in Area 51, right? If it's spacecrafts or whatever, we've got to look elsewhere for clues. Two UFO sightings were reported to the National UFO Reporting Center in Virginia on April 4th, 2019, quite recent. At 6.48 a.m., an eyewitness claimed to have seen a light blue circular craft darting across the sky in Virginia Beach headed east. So already you're pumped, right? You're jazzed. Aliens confirmed, right? Then seven minutes later, an eyewitness at the Norfolk Naval Station, 23 miles north Northwest claimed to see what resembled a shooting star with a green glow that never faded. This object also moved without noise and disappeared just like that in 10 seconds. There were 2,348 UFO sightings reported throughout the state between 2001 and 2015. Number four, Travis Walton, 1975. This horrifying abduction of a local Arizona forester, Travis Walton, I mean, take it with a grain of salt. On November 5th, 1975, Walton and a number of others from the logging crew, they were working with timber in the national forest, and then while riding in a truck with six other of his coworkers, they allegedly encountered a flying saucer or a saucer-shaped object hovering about 100 feet away in the forest. It was also making a high-pitched buzz, so it was very, you know, something was going on. Walton exited the truck and ran over, curious, and then a beam of light appeared from the craft and blasted him unconscious. The other six men were terrified and they drove away before returning moments later in panic to a now vanished Travis. Walton claims that he woke up in a hospital room observed by three short, bald creatures, aliens. He fought with them until a more human-looking figure led them to another room where he then blacked out again. Walton claimed he remembers nothing else till he found himself awake yet again alongside a highway five days later, naked, clueless of what had just happened. Number three, Brent Lesham Forest, 1980. It was Boxing Day, 1980. The forest lies between the military bases of Bentwaters and Woodbridge. Now at 3 a.m., two military personnel, John Burroughs and Jim Penniston, they both respond to bright lights in the forest. The radios also stopped working, which is not helpful at all in this case. There was a static feeling in the air as well and an odd silence. Now the closer the men got, the more they realized it wasn't one of theirs. Penniston was drawn in and he actually touched the craft. It instantly electrocuted him and apparently downloaded him with odd symbols and star map into his brain before the craft 
craft eventually blasted off again. 24 hours later, the craft returned, and Deputy Commander Charles Halt is now witness in the exact same spot. Only this time, there are now three large landing holes in the grass. Years later, Burroughs and Penniston still ask each other and the British government for their medical records from that night because they never received them. Almost 32 years later, and still, they've never received anything. Number two. O'Hare Airport. The O'Hare Airport incident happened at approximately 4.15 p.m. in broad daylight on November 7, 2006. The airport received this report that a group of 12 airport employees were all witnessing the same thing. They were all witnessing a metallic saucer shaped craft hovering still over gate C-17. It was just waiting there for something. The object was spotted by a ramp employee at first and then it was witnessed by pilots and then airline management and then numerous mechanics simultaneously. Air traffic controllers didn't even see the object on radar either. That's the scary part. But in person sat a completely silent, seven meter wide, dark gray saucer. Several witnesses outside of the airport also saw the object, calling local police and reporting it, of course, because they were terrified. Numerous phone-ins described a disc or a craft hovering above the airport as well for minutes without moving. So everybody saw this, not just airport officials. According to another witness, the object then shot straight up through the clouds at a high speed, leaving just a clear blue hole in the clouds. Number one. Zimbabwe sighting. In 1996, a mass sighting was witnessed by an entire school in broad daylight in Zimbabwe. Yeah, more than 150 students and staff were all present at this point. There have been tons of documentaries surrounding this exact case. Face to face, arm's length with a craft and also alien beings. Yeah, this is a whole cosmic visit apparently. The children, who are now mostly in their 30s and or 40s, are still convinced. They still stand by what they saw. More than 100 students can still remember what they claim to be telepathic warning from the creatures surrounding our use of technology and the hazards that it has on our planet. So that's cool. Director and writer James Fox documents this infamous interaction in his 2020 documentary, The Phenomenon. Area 51 could be housing UAPs or parts left over from interactions like this one in Zimbabwe back in 1996. Who knows? In our number 10 spot, we have the black helicopters. Apparently outside of Area 51, people have spotted black helicopters fly in and out of the area. It is said that this is the home to the government's secret helicopters. Dating all the way back to the 1970s, people have reported seeing these black helicopters. There were rumors that they were to do with cattle mutilation, toxic chemical releases over neighborhoods. But most people People seem to believe that those are just stories to cover up what they're really doing, flying the reptilian leaders in and out. Let's be real. <laughs> in our number nine spot, we have studying the spacecraft. There have been a few whistleblowers that have worked at Area 51, and these people have stated that the engineers that are working in the testing area are actually reverse engineering alien spaceships. We can assume they are doing this to figure out how the aliens made these shapes and how they fly so fast. Man, that's so trippy. As far back as the 1950s, people have reported seeing unidentified flying objects at the Southern Nevada military base. One of the whistleblowers, named Bob Lazar, has spoken out about this and apparently while working in Area 51, he saw flying saucers that were powered by an element called 115. And that was years before that element was recorded as found by humans. Imagine working on an alien spaceship and coming across a whole new metal that's not from this planet and I'm sure they've discovered things that I wouldn't even be able to dream about in my wildest dreams. In our number eight spot we have aliens. Okay, so there is no photographic evidence for this claim, but there have been whistleblowers that have said this to be true. Honestly though, anyone else thinking what I'm thinking? Are the aliens being held hostage? Or are we being held hostage? Let's be real. Most likely they're controlling us or, or the aliens are being held hostage by the reptile people that are already here and running mankind. That's it. I'm out. <laughs> Apparently though, Bob Lazar has said that he walked down a hallway at S4 in Area 51 and he saw a small gray extraterrestrial between two men in lab coats through a small window. Apparently he was told by a guard to stop looking and, you know, move along. There have been other sightings of gray creatures in other secret military bases such as the one in Dolce, New Mexico in 1979 by a man by the name of Philip Schneider. So I believe that Bob is telling the truth. What do you think? Let me know in the comment section below. At number seven, Area 51 was originally called the Paradise Ranch. 
When the area was being constructed, it was called Paradise Ranch in order to attract young workers to come and move there. For me, I find this a little bit messed up. Like, hey guys, come work for us. Oh no, sorry, um, you're kind of in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, but like, the place is called Paradise Ranch. Oh, well, if it's called Paradise Ranch, I am there. Wait, are those aliens? Ah, psych. I think the lesson that we can all learn from this, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Exploding in at number 6, Area 51 has been nuked time and time again. Area 51 is neighbour to the Nuclear Nevada test site aka the Yucca Flats which is the most bombed place on earth. Now around 740 nuclear tests have been carried out only a few miles away from Area 51. On a couple of occasions, plumes of radioactive smoke have been unleashed into the air. In at number 5. Employees of Area 51 need to sign an oath of silence. It has been confirmed from a multitude of sources that employees of Area 51 need to swear an oath of silence. On top of that, people need to sign an agreement of secrecy when they visit the site. Now riddle me this, why would you need to sign an oath of secrecy if there was nothing strange going on there? Now number 4 I find pretty hilarious. The US military snubbed the movie Independence Day because of Area 51. The Oscar award winning 1996 movie starring Will Smith managed to royally annoy the US military. According to the movie's co-writer and producer Dean Devlin, the US military had agreed to support the film by lending them costume, allowing them to film at a military base, speak to military personnel etc etc. However, they found out that there was an Area 51 reference in the script and therefore they absolutely withdrew all of their support. I mean, if it didn't exist, then what was the problem? Something strange going on in the neighbourhood at number 3, a conspiracy theory said that Area 51 tested on genetically modified children. In a conspiracy theory book written by journalist Annie Jacobson, she claims that the Nevada test site was involved in an elaborate hoax by Joseph Stalin who created disfigured genetically modified children to pilot planes that then crashed into the US to create confusion. I mean, sure. Jacobson then goes on to say that this is exactly what happened with the mysterious UFO Roswell incident and that the wreckage and UFO children were taken away to Area 51 for testing. Now Annie claims that her book is partly sourced from interviews with actual workers of Area 51. I'm not specifically saying this is real but I thought it was interesting information that she would written a book about it and everything. Strange, let me know what you think to this in the comments below. Shocking information at number 2, Area 51 has been linked to multiple deaths by toxic fumes. There have been numerous reports of deaths of workers from Area 51. In a very revealing interview with The Telegraph, former employee of Area 51, Fred Dunham, revealed that top secret waste would be incinerated on site. Now Fred started to get sick after breathing in the fumes from this mystery waste. After contracting pneumonia, coughing so hard he separated his ribs from his ribcage and blacking out, he was dismissed from his duties at Area 51. Now Fred goes on to discuss his co-worker Robert Frost in the interview. Robert Frost died aged 57, strongly linked to fumes he breathed in whilst working at Area 51. In the interview, Fred also said, guys I work with would tell me, oh did you know what's his name? Yeah, he's dead. Oh did you know another guy? Yeah, he's dead. Or he's had a stroke. He's almost dead. Altogether it was rumoured that more than 20 people had been affected. He said, I wish I had never worked up there. My doctor has told me it has cut 20 years off my life. We could have been participating in genocide for all anybody knew. But when it came to it, it was us who were being exterminated. So guys, we're getting towards the number one spot. We've had lobster deliveries, we've had alien brothels, we've had poisonous fumes, we've had all kinds of conspiracies. But what could possibly be in the number one spot of our top 10 things that you didn't know about Area 51? I have to reveal that at number one, it's Aliens! We couldn't talk about Area 51 without mentioning aliens, right? Bob claims to be a former employee of Area 51 and in 1989 he went on TV in Las Vegas to claim that he had indeed encountered extraterrestrial goings on at the base. Now Bob claims to have worked at Area 51. He said he saw flying saucers. Bob also claims that he was given an introductory briefing describing the historical involvement by extraterrestrials in this planet for the past 10,000 years. Whilst Bob has been widely discredited, many people have corroborated his story. Boyd Bushman, who worked at the base for 40 years, gave an interview before his death in 2014. He heavily suggested he knew of extraterrestrial life. 
Just before he died, he finally cracked and shared pictures of aliens he had encountered, saying most were friendly and came from a planet named Quantumanium. Most recently, author Mike Oram has come out of the I was abducted by aliens closet. Such a closet. Children's author Mike claims that he has been chased by aliens as they approached him at the edge of Area 51 in 2004. Oram also claims to have, um, yeah, an alien spirit guide. I mean, don't we all? Alright, coming in at number 10, we have the Aurora Project. This is some black ops spy plane business. Back in 1989, people began believing that Area 51 was home to a super fast, cutting edge spy plane that could travel three times the speed of Concorde. The plane was rumoredly called Aurora and is said to still exist today. The so called Black Project was said to have been in development under lock and key in Area 51 and is said to be a triangular plane more powerful than the Lockheed SR. 71 Blackbird. Adding fuel to the fire, the plane has been frequently spotted over California and in the UK. In 2014, mysterious sonic booms were heard in London and New York, leading people once again to suspect a spy plane travelling at hypersonic speed. The Air Force are protective of the whole Nevada range, which a lot of people think confirms this so called myth. But of course, the American government has categorically denied the existence of these planes. Why? Well, if they do have cutting edge state of the art spy equipment, wouldn't it defeat the point in letting people know about it. Coming into number 9, we have Mega 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 Nukes. I actually just wrote Mega Nukes, but I thought I'd say it three times for dramatic impact. In the past, Area 51 has been linked to nuclear testing, and well, really, this isn't too much of a myth, right? Between 1945 and 1992, the United States government did carry out over 1,000 nuclear tests, a lot of which were conducted at the Nevada test site. The government, of course, is pretty hush hush about it all, even though test sites are in the Nevada desert, winds can carry nuclear material to cities like Las Vegas, which are pretty close by. Some theorists claim that nuclear fallout in the states has indirectly led to the death of nearing 2 million people, which if it were true would be you know, pretty shocking. Officially, testing stopped in 1992, but some people think that Area 51 is being used to house secret underground tests a la North Korea style. Coming into number 8, we have freeze rays and heat rays. A little meme to whet your appetite here when your boy gets shot by a heat ray during the Area 51 raid and you're trying to keep him from melting. Meep. If the American military could be testing nuclear weapons at Area 51, what else could they be developing there? A lot of people think that Area 51 is the centre for developing new weapons, the likes of which we haven't seen yet. Perhaps that's what's going on there. Energy weapons. Honestly, I wouldn't be that surprised. Also, I have to say, Baba Vanga, the famous seer and blind mystic, did predict there'd be a war in Rome in 2045 using freeze ray guns, so if they were being developed at Area 51, I guess that would kind of check out on the timeline. Freeze ray guns though, seriously. In our number 7 spot, we have weather control. I've heard about this for quite some time and I truly feel like if there's something that I could fully get on board with and believe right away, it's the idea that the government controls the weather. Hear me out. First off, being able to do that would be extremely valuable and honestly, it could make you potentially threatening to your competitors. Don't mess with me, otherwise I will make sure it rains on your country for a full month and all of your crops will suffer. Watch, wars in the future will just be governments messing with each other's weather. <laughs> that would be wild. If we can make objects fly, if we can send messages through empty space through a phenomena that we call the internet, we call Wi-Fi, we could definitely create a few clouds every now and then. We do have proof though that the government has done research projects to modify clouds in the past, but who knows if there was a conclusion to this experiment, let alone if this experiment took place in Area 51. In our number 6 spot we have the CIA filings. Apparently, up until 2013, we had no idea that Area 51 even officially existed. In 2005, the National Security Archive at George Washington University filed a Freedom of Information Act about the U-2 spy plane program. And so, in 2013, the CIA was forced to declassify documents that related to Area 51. After this reveal, it became known that the military spent 20 years testing aerial surveillance programs called U-2 and Oxcart, and it also confirmed the existence of Area 51, which the locals would have been able to confirm regardless, but whatever. I could just imagine after the release of this information, all of the locals start connecting the dots about all the missing people in their area and blame it on the aliens. 
I would love to speak to some of the locals and see what they actually think and say. <laughs> that would be fascinating. Anyways, they kept Area 51 a secret for so long that there must be a number of darker secrets within it that we don't know about. You can only assume. In our number five spot, we have the US military base. Author of Area 51, An Uncensored History of America's Top Secret Military Base by Annie Jacobson, has been quoted as saying that, yes, Area 51 is filled with secrets, but these secrets are around creating weapon systems and surveillance platforms that no one can think of, you know, for the US military. Hence the reason it needs to remain a secret so they can one up their opponent. Annie has gone on to say that if everyone could think of what they were doing, then they wouldn't be doing their job correctly. Apparently, Area 51 is the birthplace of what is called ISR intelligence. Why on earth would they not understand most earthly air? Aircraft at this point in time in the world. They are deaf working on reverse engineering alien spacecraft. I believe it. In our number four spot, we have secret disappearances. In the area of Area 51, there have been a lot of reportings of disappearances. Some of young people and some are older. It has been reported that these disappearances are tied to Area 51, as some believe it's the aliens within the base that are taking these people. But most likely, the actual people of Area 51 are taking these people as test subjects, as there is no sign of them ever again after they disappear. That's what I think at least. Where are they going to and why is it so often within the vicinity of the base? Questions only the insiders would most likely know the answers to. In our number three spot, we have the Nevada Triangle phenomenon. A lot of people are very well aware of the Nevada Triangle phenomena and we're pretty positive that the people of Area 51 would know the dark secrets around it. From Las Vegas to Reno, Reno to Fresno, and Fresno to Las Vegas, there have been many reports of unusual goings on. Similar to the famous Bermuda Triangle, people disappear forever. Planes go missing, aliens have been spotted, claims of magical rocks, and so much more. The area and all its mysteriousness continues to be a complete mystery. Within the area, is the Sierra Mountains, and if you have seen the new Jurassic Park movie, that is where they keep the major dinosaurs. I bet you the dinosaurs are just a front for the truth. That is where they keep the aliens, obviously. Coming up in our number two spot, we have portals to a new dimension. Along with the home base for the reptilian race, people believe that Area 51 actually holds the portal to another dimension, which honestly isn't too far-fetched when you hear about the reportings of the people that have gone near the area in the Sierra Mountains and have disappeared, only to have been teleported to a new area. Yep, these are real reportings from seemingly coherent people. The people inside the Area 51 base would know about this, and if strange things like this are happening in this area, then I bet you that it is not a coincidence that there's a secret government base right smack in the middle of it. Coincidence? I think not, sir. In our number one spot today, we have time travel. Along with the portal to another dimension theory, there is also a theory that the people of Area 51 are hiding a time travel machine. That's right. We know that scientists in testing facilities around the world have been playing with speeds that are too fast to imagine. So it is possible that something has been invented to travel time. A lot of people say, you know, yes, this is probably possible, especially with the rise of people People claiming that they have time traveled from the future. However, some of their claims have been inaccurate, such as you know Donald Trump being the last US president, or that World War III would be in 2015. In any case, if there is a time travel machine, then Area 51 employees would possibly know about it. At least the higher ups would, even if the employees didn't know what they were working on. Starting us off with number 10, our secrets kill. In 1994, the US Air Force and the EPA were sued by the widows of Walter Kaz and Robert Frost. The two contractors died while working at Area 51 because they were present when massive quantities of unknown chemicals were being burned in open pits at Groom. The men were never told what the chemicals were, they weren't even allowed to bring gas masks from home or any external equipment, just gloves. They sustained liver, skin and respiratory
respiratory injuries and that soon led to their deaths. Biochemists analyzing the men's biopsies found high levels of industrial toxins in their tissue that are rarely ever seen in humans. Of course the women lost the case because President Clinton made Area 51 exempt from all environmental disclosure laws and because the government never actually had to reveal what the chemicals were so the case had insufficient evidence. I find this so unfair it's like the case of the population of Chernobyl like the people have to know what they're being exposed to what they've gone into so they can make their own informed decisions you can't just put people's lives on the line. Come on people let's think. Coming in at number 9 is the employee route. This is one of the most secret places in the world. The contractors there don't even know what materials they're working with. No civilian has ever been inside. Presidents in the past have even requested to know more like the place is an enigma. And if you thought the employees working there would at least have the real tea, well you're still half wrong again. National security wanted to make 100% sure Area 51's employees wouldn't ever be able to make it to work without a road map so they came up with a plan. Plan. Workers show up to a certain spot in Las Vegas every day and actually get flown into work so they can't remember how to get there. Forget the employees, they had to minimize other people's suspicion and curiosities as well. I mean employees could easily be followed so they prevented it completely. Imagine being flown into work every day, usually I'd say what a life but in this case I'm really not too sure. And to top it all off, all employees are paid in cash only and have to sign their receipt with a fake name since they're Part of a black project. At number 8 we have Dreamland. Before the site gained all this fame with Area 51, it was actually called Dreamland. Weird, I know. I only know of one other Dreamland and it's a water park, not an alien conspiracy site. When it was Dreamland, there weren't all these spooky, freaky stories surrounding it. It didn't make people run for the hills like it does now. It was initially called Dreamland because it was meant to be a quiet place where workers could do their job, mind their own business, and not be called out for being aliens. I don't know whose idea it was to call it Dreamland. Maybe they thought all their dreams would come true if they got all these military jets, right? Or these nuclear weapons, or if they dominated other planets. I don't know. That's why they did all this testing, right? But even then, I still don't see the link between military training and aircraft testing and Dreamland. It's probably Dreamland for someone, but that's definitely not me. Coming into number seven, we have aliens. Of course, of course. This is the most popular theory, and right now, we think it's a myth because we've got no discernible proof that Area 51 does contain aliens, but there is a lot of speculation. In 1947, a mysterious crash shook the town of Roswell in New Mexico, and indeed, it became infamous from then on out. Eyewitnesses claimed that they saw a silvery disc shaped UFO ahead of the crash, and others even reported seeing grey aliens at the crash site. Many suspected a cover up, and it was widely believed that the alien bodies and crash wreckage were taken to Area 51 for examination. Physicist Bob Lazar claimed to have worked at Area 51 in the 1950s, and he confirmed that there were indeed grey aliens being kept there, and that it was his job to attempt to reverse engineer alien technology. Advanced photographic and film evidence of alien autopsies was leaked in 1995, with Ray Santilli claiming that it came from the US military. American journalist Annie Jacobson has conducted extensive research on Area 51, and she even wrote a book about it. She also claims to have interviewed a sword who seemed extremely and exceptionally scared and also exceptionally credible. Right now aliens at Area 51 is an assumed myth, but like, is it? After the storm, will this myth be rebunked? That's a word, right? It is now. Coming in at number 6, we have alien human hybrids. So, one extension of the whole there are aliens at Area 51 thing is that they're actually breeding them with humans. Honestly, what? There is an article on the crack theory website collectiveevolution.com which claims that agents of a new world order are generating a breed of cross species that look just like us but have the mental and physical capabilities of aliens. Sure, 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 sure. Some think that actually. There are indeed the much memed sexy aliens at the facility, and some people are getting off with them left, right, and center to make new human alien hybrids. Creepy. Creepy. I know it sounds fun and everything, but like, do you really want to snog an alien? Others think that the government is harvesting alien organs, and honestly, I'm not sure what's scarier. 
Coming into number 5 we have the One World Government. So I just mentioned it in the previous point, a lot of people do think that Area 51 is the secret meeting place of the Illuminati or the Reptilians or a One World Government. The whole reptilian thing has been a popular theory with Americans and the wider world who believe that the world elite is actually made up of lizard people. This theory is most heavily perpetuated by good old David Icke. He, in my opinion, is excellent value. Ike says thousands of years ago the reptilian beings from the constellations Orion, Sirius and Draco intervened on planet earth and began interbreeding with humans, not physically however, but rather through manipulation of the human coding or DNA. Ike basically states that it is no coincidence that humans have fundamental reptilian genetics within their brain. I'd like to see the science. Their headquarters? Area 51. Obviously. I do actually kind of think that Mark Zuckerberg's a lizard though. So. Coming in at number 4 we have time machines. Other myths surrounding Area 51 claim that the test facility holds the secret to time. Literally. Of course with top secret bases like Area 51 people have assigned all kinds of whimsical projects to it. Throughout history there have been suggestions that time travel could be real. The cell phone lady in the Charlie Chaplin movie, the Swiss watch found in a 400 year unopened tomb, the people who come forward to the media claiming to be time travellers like John Titor. Are they all hoaxes? Or could they? Just could they be time travellers and if so, is the time machine being held at area 51? Interestingly there is a whole host of other theories that UFOs are actually time travellers from the future. Weird, are we the aliens? Coming into number 3 we have Area 51 doesn't exist. Now this myth has been debunked but the fact that it was perpetuated for so long is pretty terrifying. Area 51 has been in existence since some time in the late 1940s to early 1950s but up until 2013 the United States government refused to acknowledge its existence. Barack Obama was the first president to actually mention it publicly. Before that though the government doubled down on its denial. It even wrote that neither the Air Force nor the Department of Defense owns or operates any location known as Area 51. In 2005, Jeffrey Rickelson of George Washington University's National Security Archive submitted a Freedom of Information Act request to the US government to disclose the true nature of Area 51. In 2013, Washington did indeed release a bunch of documents. In 2018, they actually finally lifted the ban on satellite imagery over Area 51, which means that you can now see that it very much does exist on Google Maps. The issue here though is that the facility's existence was totally denied but turned out to be real which kind of makes people nervous as to what else could be being covered up by the government. A lot of people think that the government caved on admitting the facility's existence and actually secretly moved all of the important work away from the test site and is now using it as a red herring, a distraction and a decoy to avoid bringing attention to a new facility, a better guarded secret, an area 52 if you will. Coming into number 2 we have the storm is a joke. The Facebook event created in June 2019 calling for people to storm Area 51 so we could quote unquote see them aliens is said to have started out as a joke and I guess I can see that. However the joke has spiralled out of control with as of the time of this recording 2 million people threatening attendance. The man who started it has finally revealed his identity, Matty Roberts. Matty. What a lad. Matty claimed that their post was a joke but like what if it wasn't? It does kind of make a fair point, the government keeps what it feels like we don't need to know secret but the sheer virality of this post goes to show that actually people do seem to want answers and we're realising that in numbers maybe we can get them. The government rules by the principle that knowledge is power but only a select few people have knowledge and are we waking up to the fact that there are 320 million Americans out there? What if they suddenly were all convinced to stand up and ask for answers? The government would be pretty afraid right? So what if the event wasn't a joke? What if it was actually the first spark of the resistance and rebellion? Finally coming into number 1 we have a 10,000 year history. We mentioned Bob Lazar earlier, he's the guy who said that he worked for Area 51 as a physicist. Well the scariest part about his claims regarding Area 51 is not that the facility is housing aliens or that the government is trying to recreate alien tech, but that actually Area 51 is home to an extensive database of alien history that links extraterrestrials to humans over thousands of years and the government know all about it. Lazar claims that aliens have been involved in human affairs for over 10,000 years. Perhaps all of the theories about aliens building Stonehenge or the pyramids of Giza are actually true. What if aliens have been involved in the formation of society like a number of people we previously labelled as crazy suspected? Wouldn't that be like actually mind meltingly terrifying? Yeah, 
It would. If you want more mysterious photos taken from Area 51, then check out Part 1 of our series. The photos that we found for Part 1 will straight up shock you. Click now.